Hi, it's Father Jeremiah of Grace Anglican Church here in Gastonia, North Carolina, and today we're going to be talking about the Collect for the fourth Sunday of Easter, and that Sunday is also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. This was a change that came about with the 1979 Book of Common Prayer that was released by the Episcopal Church in 1979, following a new lectionary cycle that had three years of scripture readings instead of the historic one year, it denoted that the fourth Sunday of Easter, which would be the third Sunday after Easter, would be Good Shepherd Sunday. And each year, we read a section of John chapter 10, and this prayer reflects those readings. It reflects John chapter 10 and Psalm 23 of how Yahweh is the shepherd and Jesus is the good shepherd. As we are about to get into all of that, do those three things I always ask you to do. Like, share, subscribe. Doing those things helps you stay connected with us and to discover our content as we release it and lets others discover us as well. And now for the prayer that we're talking about today. The prayer is the Collect for the fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday, the Collect of the Good Shepherd. And this prayer is prayed like this. O oh God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Did you hear that? This prayer reflects what I was saying about John chapter 10, that Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Over and over in John chapter 10, he says that to us, to tell us that he is the one who is going to shepherd us, who is going to guide us, who is going to lead us and protect us and provide for us. That's what a shepherd does. He protects and provides for his sheep. He calls them by name when they're gathered up with other sheep and they will come out because they recognize his voice. And so in this prayer, we speak to God the Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the Good Shepherd of your people, that is, God's people. Those who belong to God belong to Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And our petition in this particular prayer is a short petition, but it is full of everything that we need to know about what Jesus is doing for us. The first thing we ask is grant that. So we're petitioning God to grant something to us, to come to us, to work in us. Grant that when we hear His voice, that is, Jesus is the one who is going to initiate our salvation. Jesus is the one who acts toward us, who acts for us, who acts on our behalf. So we ask and pray, grant that when we hear his voice, when he initiates his call of salvation, when he works in us and calls us back to himself, when we've become wayward and gotten lost, he comes and hunts us down and brings us back to himself. He is the initiator, the one who comes to us. We pray, when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name. So we're asking that when we hear his voice that God would grant that we would know Jesus, that we would know him as our good shepherd, that we would respond to him when he calls us and not just calls us, but he calls us by name. He knows us. He understands us. He recognizes everything that is broken within us, everything that is wayward within us, and he knows our name. And he still calls us to himself. We ask that we would be granted to know him, to know him as he knows us. In John 10, Jesus speaks of him knowing the sheep and the sheep knowing him just as the Father knows Jesus and Jesus knows the Father. There's an intimacy, an intimate relationship that is so similar to God the Father and God the Son's relationship that is an intimate communion together and that we and Jesus are lifted up into that very communion between God the Father and God the Son, Jesus. And we ask that we would know him who calls us by name. And then we also petition that we would follow where he leads. That's a call to obedience. That's a desire to obey what Christ calls us to do. After all, he is the good shepherd. And the shepherd knows what is best for his sheep. He knows what they need. And he will provide it for us. And so we ask that we would follow where he leads, that we would obey him and his callings upon our lives, that we would listen to his commands, that we would be guided by his rod and his staff, that is, his word and his spirit, that he gives us the Holy Spirit that we would be renewed in order to obey, and he gives us his word that we would have something that speaks directly to us from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that tells us what God desires of us and calls us to work, calls us to act, calls us to obey. And so we ask all of those things in this tight-knit little prayer. We recognize Jesus is the good shepherd. We ask that when we hear his voice, when he initiates and calls us, that we will be granted knowledge of who Jesus is, who has called us by our very names, and that we would then follow where he leads, that we would obey him. And so I hope that this helps you understand what is happening in this prayer, that we are desiring Jesus to be our good shepherd. We are desiring him to lead and guide us and we are desiring to follow him. And in all of that, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always, now and forever. Amen.